Great morning, fellow traders. This is Austin. Monday, October 27th. Almost time to print money. Working with crude oil and the Russell equally. Um, very simple rules, guidelines, if you will. Using the same charts for both a filter chart and a trigger chart. I'm using an initial stop of minus 8 ticks for each symbol. On any given day, if I reach minus 40 ticks on either symbol, then it's shut down in that market for the day. If I reach minus 40 ticks in both symbols, it's shut down for the day. Otherwise, um, whichever one's moving is whichever one we're working with. Not a lot more to say than that. It is, um, if I hadn't already said this, it's 8.52 a.m. Eastern, looking for um, the start of the pit session for each symbol. It'll be 9 o'clock for crude, 9.30 for the Russell, and away we go. That simple. See you in a bit. It is 9.21 Eastern. Nothing done so far. Pit session's open in crude. Still waiting for the open in uh, stocks. Ten more minutes. Potential long reversal zone would be around the nine above 79.90 in crude uh, right now it's on a sell only bias it was uh, give sell signal pre-market around the 80 20 area before i was at the screens and it's subsequent it is subsequently traded from that 80 20 zone down to uh, 79.44 is that right yeah 79.44 so it went 75 ticks 75 cents lower from the pre-market sell to now. Uh, I'm just working the pit session at this time, so uh, nothing done for me. Uh, sit, watch, and wait. Looking for the open of um, the pit session in stocks before I get started there with the Russell. So that's the uh, State of the Union address. Nothing done yet. 922. Okay, stocks have opened. It is the 936. The TF has signaled a breakdown sell around the 1107 zone. Um, my fill here was 1106.9. Figure just one tick off the common mark. Nothing happening in crew just yet. Looking to sell the 7950 plus area. Looking to buy the 7990 area. So between 7990 and 7950. 55 whatever there's um, that's just the sideways chop zone where it is right now so uh, so watch and wait nothing more to do but uh, execute well we might as well <coughs> take one look at where price should go and that would be the uh, open range there and the first roadmap lower is the 233 warning track around 1102 so it should make its way to 11.02 by and by, and I would probably uh, look to manage there. Looking for 50 ticks or better, I'll settle for 40 uh, while risking 8. So there we are, 9.37. Okay, got a lot going on here in a short period of time. Order pending. Order canceled. Have, uh, second sell on... On the Russell, it's just been uh, chopping this level here, so we're going to take the risk off that. We're short one on uh, crude oil from 79.64, and I, there's a there's a second sell signal around 54, so I would add to the position. I'd take a break down there if that happened, and then if it uh, stops out, then I will clear the order. So in other words, if they come up and stop this out, then I'll clear this. If they come down and kick this in, then um, order eight filled. Tick stop. There goes the Russell out. Eight tick stop here, par stop there, and uh, you know we're just working to uh, see whatever takes off first. That simple. Go order pending. Stop. Order go. canceled. Risk. And now we will take the second position. If the market goes, the Russell is um, giving a secondary secondary sell would be around um, 1105. 1105 if they took that down. 
Order filled. Chop mode. Close everything. Order canceled. Close everything. Wait for the chop to stop. 946. All right. Busy, busy. Uh -huh. I've been short three times the Russell in the 1107 area. And three times it banged me out in the wherever it was for a total of um, minus 16 ticks. And then a dove. <laughs> That's how it goes. Hey, these are whippy, illiquid markets. What are you going to do? Everyone understands that. It's uh, the same markets for all traders in the universe. No difference. Crude oil, I've been short that, and, and, I, and I am now. And it's just uh, pounding inside of the open range here. So it's just whip chop in crude for now. And then TF made this nice little extension down. Just couldn't ride it. It just um, whipped up. And even um, wider stops, even 15 tick stops wouldn't have held. It would have ripped those too. So that's how it goes. Welcome to Thin Markets, circa 2014. It's now 9.55 Eastern in uh, sit, watch, and wait mode. Managing crude, waiting to see if anything uh, presents itself next in the Russell. All right. 10.05, same situation. Um, crude oil is just chopping around. As you can see, it's holding the bottom of its open range. hasn't gone anywhere. And this is a 10-minute chart. That's the 5-minute open range. So it hasn't gone anywhere. And um, the Russell, that snuck past me. Like I said, we shorted a couple of times. It just chopped the zone. And then um, it took off lower. So that's the situation. Two stops in the Russell. And uh, several pars, several scratches in crude. This is my last attempt short here. If this one holds, then I'm going to add it a, a secondary breakdown, and I'll just have eight ticks risk on this position, no risk on this. And if this stops out, then I'm going to cancel the sell side, and I'm going to look for um, a retracement up from here. So uh, I would. This is the last sell attempt in this area. If it chops through here, then it's just dead chop. <laughs> Anyway, nice directional extension, and Russell just couldn't ride it um, from the entries that I uh, happened to take. And nothing has gone on whatsoever in crude except chop spike. So that's our day. So far, that's our morning. Looks like I'm going to be Stop order canceled. Okay, so anyway, done with the downside, and now I'm looking upside only in crude, and we'll see what, if anything, happens in the Russell. It is 10.07. Okay, like we said, done with the sell side in crude. Now they're going upside and uh, long where we wanted to be. Let's see what happens. I'm going to uh, take a little Order pending. Off. Order canceled. I've said this before, and I, I'm only saying this in matter of fact fashion. It does tend to piss people off, if you'll pardon my French. We're never on the wrong side of the market. When price is going up, we're buying, and when price is going down, we're selling. We were on the sell side today, we being um, here the CM team, those of us who use this methodology, whether it's the live room or, or individually on our own. We're never on the wrong side of the market. We see which way the market wants to go more often than not. If um, it turns suddenly, it stops us out for minimal damage, and if it continues in favor, we try to execute. The challenge is right now, as I've said so many times, the markets are illiquid. The challenge right now is executions, is getting the fills where you want the fills, holding your stop where you want to, uh, you know, protect to, to defend the position, and uh, waiting for it to go from A to B. In other words, there's so much noisy chop in the market. It's really tough to get your entry to hold. It's 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 tough to get your entry where you want it, the stop to hold, and for price to go where you expect it will. That's the only challenge that we face. The execution, uh, I'm sorry, the directional side, the trend side, the buy side. That's cake. That's cake and ice cream. And I don't say that in a in a um, arrogant way. I say that matter of fact because it's science. Anyone can learn to measure and read price action in which direction it's likely to go if it's going to go any direction. All right, That's the easy part of trading. That challenge in trading comes with the execution, you know, getting in where you want to, um, not having the orders dance around, fly away, spike through, miss. And then once you get filled, um, holding any kind of reasonable stop 
through the heavy sideways back and forth noise before price eventually goes in the direction that it's that it's headed so those are the only challenges that I see in trading right now certainly not figuring out which direction to trade that's by far the easiest thing to do it's the actual execution in these very thin very choppy algo driven markets that creates the challenge 1013 Okay, 10.32, not a lot to report. Uh, managed to catch a pop in the Russell far enough to almost scratch the day overall. As you can see here, this is the five-minute chart of crude. It's just um, dead chopping inside of the open range. And whenever they have a fairly wide span, um, that's not uncommon. So dead chop here in the range. If it trades outside, I would look to be long and ride it higher. And then in uh, the Russell, like I said, unfortunately, I couldn't hold the stop from the 1107 shorts. It was actually above 1107 that I was uh, short, and it stopped it out a couple of times and then made the nice dive, and it's come back up and almost to the open range, and it's rolling over again. There were, there were no sell signals there. So uh, moral of the story, just uh, sit watch in wait mode, waiting for something methodical. Markets are very liquid, so we play chase a lot and uh, see what we can catch. Same story for everyone in the trading universe with zero exceptions. 10.33. All right, we have crude oil wigging out. Order pending. Parabolic, and I had the, um, the same orders in. As Order before. canceled. You know what? Let's do this. Let's give it just that much breathing room because it may retrace on the spiky spike thing. So here's crude. It's just um, sat around in its open range. And I've been watching um, the Russell. I've been trying to work the Russell. Actually, order, order filled. Trying to work the Russell long. And um, it's been running away. And then all of a sudden, um, crude wigged. So, you know, what we're going to do take that risk off. So we're risking eight ticks here, and we're um, two ticks to the good there. So if everything stops out, that'd be minus six ticks across the board. And just chop if this does work out. Let me see. Let me see. I don't know where I would. I don't know where I would get in um, the Russell higher. I don't see anything. So just gonna sit on that. And crude is um, working its way. Eighty sixty plus is on um, the two three three up so I'd probably be out before that but uh, it's pointing towards two three three I'm sorry it's pointing towards uh, 80 60 plus order pending order canceled if the Russell doesn't work from here it's probably not gonna work <clears throat> and I'm going to, if I do that, if the Russell stops out on that side and this comes down and stops out, it's scratched for the day. And then um, that's managing the P&L. So now we're hoping for takeoff in the Russell. What we really need is the top of this open range to crack. If it does that, we're good. And what we really need is um, crude oil to keep going up and not do a V-turn right back down. 10.48. All right, Russell is um, just bebopping around here. I'm going to add at order pending 11.091 unless the stop gets taken out. If the stop gets taken out, then I'm going to scratch uh, the Russell and leave it alone, in which case it's just chop pounding inside of the open range here. And if it does go up and take that out, then um, it should be good to the upside. So that'll be that. And then I would have um, no risk on one contract and then eight ticks risk on the other. And over here, we have um, six ticks locked in. So that's kind of managing across the spectrum. The big picture, five-minute chart, the Russell did the surge blow move down almost to the CM Roadmap 1. You can see how magnetized the, the warning track 233 came up, rolled over, um, big buy spike, buy program spike, don't know why. 
up into the um, open range resistance and now it's uh, channeling there and it's uh, also happens to be inside mo most of most importance it's inside of a CM pattern sequence so um, just a very sideways staccato illiquid illiquid choppy futures markets today 1053 Alrighty then, it is 11.05. I have given the Russell a couple of more chances to the long side. It stopped them out. And I have um, 10 ticks locked in on crude. And so if both of these stops come out, then I'm going to be in the hole about 10 ticks overall cumulative. If they keep going higher, then that's the idea. So the moral of the story is between now and one o'clock in the afternoon they're either going to chop sideways or they're going to continue higher in uh, worst case scenario i'm going to be in a very slight draw and best case scenario they're going to go higher and and uh, you know we're going to finish positive so that's how it's been very um challenging morning like i said the markets are illiquid i hate to use that overuse that term but i don't know if such a thing is possible that's the current state of the markets and that's how you get this all right, and so we're trying to we're doing our best to navigate through that. Now I'm going to take that risk to to nothing, and so worst case scenario, they're going to uh, they're going to take us out. We're going to be at a minimal draw, just nearly scratch you could say, and then best case scenario they're going to keep going higher, and that keep going higher would involve. 1112 to 1116 in the Russell and in crude it would involve 8066 to um, above so <clears throat> here we are giving them every chance to go somewhere they've not gone anywhere yet uh, TF has remained inside of its open range except for that brief foray out and then um, crude has um, you know done the spiky spike thing but it's trying so there we go. Sit, watch, and wait, and manage. 11.07. 11.08. Okay, they're starting to run a little bit. Um, the Russell keeps uh, testing the resistance there in the open range. So what I'm going to do is um, take that to there. And then I'm going to take crude here. So there's 30 ticks in crude and uh, 6 ticks in the Russell. Reason being crude just hit some solid, con some congestive resistance and it did so on a spike move. So um, it's a coin toss whether it's going to continue up there or come right back to the open range. So considering it's a coin toss, I'm going to take... Uh, what's offered there for the moment and then as far as the Russell goes it's struggling with the top of the open range resistance so moral of the story is I would be to the good 30 ticks I'm actually gonna make that 31 ticks in case of slippage you know, not gonna be any slippage they're firing higher alright well that, that works for me now we're gonna order go pending ticks, order cancelled Order canceled. Order pending. 41 ticks in crude. Order pending. And, um, 15 ticks. Order canceled. In the Russell. Or 17 ticks, I'm sorry. Yeah. Order filled. Ticks. All right, so the Russell has um, scratched itself out for the day. Um, no, actually it hasn't. It's my, um, has it? Yeah, the Russell scratched itself for the day. I'm at minus 10 ticks in, in, uh, crew trying to keep these things straight here as a challenge. Order pending. And let's just stick in a 52 tick stop. Order, here. order filled. Stop, okay. order, order filled. That was an errant, uh. It was a leftover stop up there anyway um, so plus 52 ticks there 42 ticks in in crude I believe it is and scratch for 42 
to, no it wouldn't be. See, I'm about scratched for the TF and whatever half of this is. About 46 ticks in crude. And that is going to complete my day. Um, they did what, they're, about, they're headed towards what we expected, but um, you can see it's all, you know, program down, chop, chop, program up, program up, and uh, the same thing in the Russell. It's, um, you know, trying to make its way higher, but um, I was more concerned about working the the uh, P&L than I was anything otherwise, because in the end, uh, P&L is all that counts. Day one of five, we'll do it again tomorrow. We'll do it Wednesday afternoon after the FOMC session. We'll do it Thursday and Friday. Uh, same sequence. Hope this helps. Have a great one.